In today's video, we're going to build this awesome accordion using only HTML and CSS. Really quick before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Atlantic.net. Atlantic.net provides great VPS hosting and they are offering a free one gig virtual server with SSDs and block storage for free for a year plus $25 in free credits to use for other services they offer if you use the link in the description below. It's super easy to use. After I signed up, I was able to provision a new server in less than 30 seconds. They also have incredible reliability and redundancy on their servers. So try Atlantic.net to develop, test, or launch your next project. Click the link in the description below and use the code STACKER to get your $25 in credit. Okay, so today I'm using CodePen and I'll have a link in the description below so that you can check this out. I'm going to create the HTML using Emmet. So the first thing we're going to get is a div and with the class of menu, within that we're going to have an li with the class of menu item. And we want that times four. And then within that we're going to have an anchor with the class of button. Within that we're going to have an i tag with the class of far and f a user we'll change that on the rest of them so we will be using font awesome so that's why we have those classes and then we need to move up and we will add a div with the class of menu item item underscore underscore sub so we'll have some sub menus within those we will have anchors uh, we'll just add two and that should do it there we go okay so we have a main div, the class of menu. Then within these, we have some LIs with the class of menu item. This first one, we're going to add an ID to, and that is going to be profile. All right, and then this href is going to reference profile, and I'll explain why in a, in a bit. Okay, let's just make this a little bit more readable. We have an A, we have an I tag here, and this is for, again, for font awesome. So this shows this uh, user icon. All right, along with the icon, we also want our uh, word. So profile is for the, is this one. Then this one has a subclass. So let's make this a little bit more readable. Again, we've got two anchors, and these anchors are not gonna go anywhere. The first one will say posts, and the second one will say picture. Our next uh, menu item is going to be messages, so we're going to give this the ID of messages. And then the anchor within that is going to reference the same thing, messages, class of button, let's Move that down. Now this one, instead of user, is going to be uh, envelope. And then the word on there will be uh, messages. This one has a submenu as well. And it is going to have three items. So let's copy this one. These are all not going to go anywhere. First one we will name new. And then sent and spam. All right, our next button is going to be uh, settings. So we're going to give this the ID of settings. This is going to reference settings. Then this icon is going to be uh, cog. And then the word in here will be settings. And it will have a submenu as well. And these aren't going to go anywhere. And we'll say password and language. All right, the last one, let's see, we're not going to add an ID on this. This isn't going to have a submenu, so we'll get rid of that. And instead of user, this is going to be uh, sign out alt. And this 
will be log out. All right, if you want to become familiar with Font Awesome, the documentation is great. Just go to fontawesome.com and you can find all of these settings. All right, so we've got the HTML done. Of course, this looks pretty bad, so let's work on the CSS. First thing that I'm going to do is set some variables, and I'm just going to copy these over. So we're going to set a blue color, a dark color, a background, gray, and light gray. All right, after that, we'll have some resets. We'll set the margin to zero, padding to zero, box sizing will be border box. Uh, we're also going to set the font family to uh, sans serif is good. Then we'll move on to the body. Within the body, we're going to display this as flex. We want to uh, align everything vertically and horizontally to the center. So that's the easiest way. Uh, flex and then align items, center, justify content, center. Okay, so now everything is centered uh, horizontally. Now we just need vertically in order to do that. We'll set a min height uh, to 100 VH. Now everything's centered perfectly. Uh, we're also going to set our background color. Uh, we're going to set that to our background variable. There we go. All right, let's move on to our menu. And in our menu, we're going to set a width on here to 20 rim and a border radius. There. Uh, we'll set that to 0 0.2 rem and overflow we'll set that to hidden i'm going to be using rem units uh, everywhere across the board so that when we're done with this you can see that it's going to be responsive to no matter what the user settings are so for instance if the user uh, in their browser sets their default font size to 30 pixels uh, if you're not using rem units you could run into some serious uh, issues with uh, accessibility all right, within our menu, we had, uh, we had an A tag, and we're going to set the text decoration. We had several A tags, so we're going to go ahead and set that here. And then we'll move on to the menu item. All right, menu items, we're going to set that to list style of none. Get rid of those uh, bullet points. And then we're going to set a border on top to one pixel solid. And we have a variable of the dark blue. There we go. And then we're going to set the overflow on this to hidden as well. All right, now we'll move on to our button. And we're going to set this to display block. And padding. We'll set that to one rim top and bottom, 1.2 rim left and right. Background on this, we're going to set that to our variable of blue. And we'll set the color of the font, uh, the color of the font to white. And we're going to set this position relative. And that is so that we can position uh, a before pseudo element absolute within this relative button. Okay, so on the button, we're going to use a pseudo element before we have to set our content, and that's going to be blank, and then position is going to be absolute. Width, we'll set that to one rim, and height. We're going to set that to one rim. Background is going to be our variable blue. Left, we're going to set that to 1.5 rim. 
and bottom to negative 0.5 rem. And then we'll set our transform to rotate and 45 degrees. Okay, and so what we're doing here is we're creating that little uh, triangle so that when it expands down, we have that little indicator. All right, last thing on the button is we have, uh, within the button, we have an eye tag. So we'll target that, and we just want to set the margin right on that to one rim. Push the wording a little bit further away from the icon there. All right, next we'll look at the uh, submenu. So we named that menu item sub. All right, we're going to set the background on this to our variable gray. And then we're going to set the overflow on this to hidden and uh, set a transition and what transition there uh, on the max height. Uh, set that to 0 0.3 seconds because we'll, we're going to initially set the max height to zero. Uh, and we're going to transition that when we click on it. It's going to transition and we'll have a little bit of a short animation. All right, next we have our menu item, oops, item sub, and then the anchor within that. So we're going to display these as block, and then we'll set a padding on these of one rim top and bottom and 1.6 rim left and right. Set the color of the text on those to white. And we're going to set the font size just a little bit smaller to uh, 0.9 rem. We're going to set the position on this to relative and border, uh, border bottom one, one pix solid and the variable of the light gray. All right, you can't see those yet. So if I actually click on it right now, it's not going to do anything. In order to get these submenus to show up, what we have to do is we target our menu item, target, and then menu item sub. And this is where we're going to set our max height to 10 EM. All right, so what this is doing, menu item target. So if we go back to our HTML, we have our menu item, which is here, and the target would be the ID. So when we click on this, we're referencing the LI that's above it. So here, we're getting that LI, and then we're saying menu item sub below that LI, we wanna set the max height to 10 EM. So now when I click on these, They'll work. All right, so now what we want to do is we want some sort of an indicator that we are hovering over these submenu uh, items. So what we'll do here is we're going to, again, be within our menu item sub. And then we're going to target our anchor and create a before. We need our content, and we'll set that to blank. We're going to set the position on this to absolute. We're going to set the left on this to zero and the top is going to be zero. We're going to set a width of 0 0.4 rem and a height of 100%. We're going to set the background to a variable of blue. And then we're going to set a transform and a translate x, translate x. We're going to set that to a negative 0 0.4 rem. So that's going to move it off to the left. We're going to set a transition of 0 0.3 seconds and then an initial opacity of 0. 
Okay, so that again, that's not going to give us anything yet because it's pushed off to the left and it's hidden because the opacity is zero. So in order to bring that in, we're going to target our menu item sub and then the anchor and hover and before. So when we hover over those submenu items, we're going to set the opacity to one and we're going to set the transform and the translate x to zero. So now we can do that. And then when we hover over them, we get this little indicator that comes out from the left and it uh, slowly appears. That's all there is to it. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.